Hi, I'm Cliff Johnson. I'm a 767 Czech Airman at the Flight Academy. I know that some of you watching this tape are getting ready to do your loft tomorrow in preparation uh, for your IOE. Others of you are line pilots who have possibly been flying the airplane for a couple of years. In any case, we're going to discuss VNAV today, and I hope that I can give you some good ideas and hints on the best way to use VNAV out on the line on your day-to-day -day operation. I want to start off by explaining that the VNAV system on these 7576 is really not all that different from what you would expect it to be if you just think about it a little bit. Uh, when we hand fly an aircraft, we're using certain techniques that really are about the same as what the VNAV does on the 7576, and I'd like to explain that to you. When you're climbing out in an aircraft, we're using certain cues to, to set our power and to set our pitch. And during climb, we normally set our power at maximum climb power, whatever that happens to be for the particular airplane. And in the 7576, we do the same thing. VNAV uses EPR. And in order to uh, establish the proper pitch, we normally just look at our airspeed indicator. So power is determined by just a set EPR. Pitch is determined by what the airspeed is doing. And indeed, on the 7576, if you look at your ADI, you know we've got our auto throttle enunciation down here, and we've got our pitch enunciation down here. The auto throttle is going to show EPR, or in the case of a 76, it'll show N1, and VNAV if it's selected, will show VNAV speed during the climb. So that makes sense. That's the same way we do it when we're flying the airplane ourselves. As we reach our cruising altitude, we change our cues. What do we use to set power? We use our speed. We look to see how fast the aircraft is going. If it's going too fast, we pull the power back. If it's not going fast enough, we add power. So speed is the answer there. What do we use to set our pitch? Altitude. Altitude hold, if you've got a, a normal old-fashioned autopilot. In the case of a uh, VNAV-equipped aircraft, we use something a little bit different from altitude, and that is VNAV path. Auto throttles are controlling speed. So these are the configurations, these are the enunciations you're going to see on the ADI of a 7576 as you level off in cruise. Now in descent, it gets a little bit more involved, but it's really still the same basic uh, ideas that we've been using all along as far as where to set the power, where to set the pitch. <clears throat> Let me erase this so that I can draw a profile up on the board. If we're at flight level 310, and we know that we have to cross a particular point, in this case, Gilroe intersection, at 8,000 feet, and we also know that there's a previous, a prior point, Salinas VOR, at 16,000 feet, we're going to set the airplane up so as to start down at the appropriate time in order to use idle power, the Mach speed that the descent calls for, till we cross over to the uh, airspeed that it calls for in order to cross this point at 16,000. Then we're going to continue that descent until we actually slow down at 10,000 feet and then continue on down to 8,000 feet. The FMC does the same thing. The FMC actually looks at the point that you need to cross at various altitudes, looks at the distance that it has to go, it knows what kind of speed it's going to maintain during the descent, and it knows that it has to slow down here at 10,000 feet, and it knows that it has to reach 8,000 feet at a certain uh, speed. It turns out that the speed during the descent depends on the weight and the temperature and other things, but approximately 0.80 
until approximately 295 knots. Those vary from time to time and day to day, but that's about it. Then down below 10,000 feet, it holds 240 knots. You say, how come not 250? I'll explain that to you in just a little bit as we get deeper into this. <clears throat> if you look at your ADI, while we're in cruise up here at 31,000 feet, as we said earlier, your auto throttles are going to say speed. And you're going to be in VNAV path. As you approach this top of descent, ATC gives us clearance to descend to 8,000 feet. In fact, they say cross Gilroa at 8, cross Salinas at 16. We say fine. We've already set the airplane up, and I'm going to backtrack just a little bit here by showing you the legs page. And I'm going to show you what we have in the legs page. It's going to show Salinas at 16,000 feet. We've put that in there. And it's going to show Gilroa at 8,000 feet. We've inserted those numbers too. There are speeds associated with this, but we're not worried about it because they're just default speeds. They happen to correspond to these speeds and the 240 knots below 10. <clears throat> ATC clears us to cross these particular places. As soon as they do, we reach up to our mode control panel. Oh, let's put that right here. And we crank in the altitude that we're cleared to. It's a pilot's discretion type descent, so we'll crank 8,000 feet in there. Why not 16,000 feet? Because we don't want to level at 16,000 feet, we want to level at 8,000 feet. The FMC will take care of our 16,000 feet as long as we pay attention to it. As the airplane progresses to the point that it determines is the proper place to start down, it will go into the descent page. Actually, the descent page, the cruise page will disappear, the descent page will become active, the aircraft starts down. If you were doing this yourself, where would you put the throttles? Idle. And what would you use to determine the pitch of the aircraft? Basically, you'd be looking at your DME and you'd be seeing how far you are from each one of these points, 16 or 8, depending on which one is more appropriate. And you'd say, well, I'm X number of miles right now, and I'm right on the altitude that I want to be. Now I've gotten a little closer, I'm X number of miles, I'm still right on the altitude. Now I see I'm starting to get a little bit high because I've figured out my distance and my altitude. So I push the nose over a little bit. So basically I'm following a path here. And that's exactly what the FMC is doing. It's also following a path. This is all well and good as long as the winds and the temperature and the weight of the aircraft are exactly what you told the machine that they were going to be. But let's suppose for a second here that the winds start blowing a little bit stronger than you anticipated, and you weren't able to program the FMC for these stronger winds. The airplane is going to tend to get high on the path, just as we showed here. And as a result, the nose is going to lower. The pitch of the aircraft is going to drop. When the pitch of the aircraft drops, what's going to happen to the airspeed? There's nothing here that's controlling this airspeed. The throttles are at idle and the pitch of the aircraft is following the path, so the airspeed is free to go wherever it wants to. The only reason it tends to stay where it is is because this is a pre-programmed path, and the FMC knows what that path is. But we've gotten a little high, the nose drops, the airspeed picks up. No big deal. We're still on the path. We're still going to make these crossing restrictions. If it should get 15 knots high, airspeed gets plus 15 knots we will get an enunciation on the FMC. Down in the bottom, there'll be an FMC message, and it will say, drag required. This is a little bit of a misnomer. It shouldn't really say drag required. A better way to put it would be to say drag suggested, because drag is not really required here. We're still on the path, and we're still coming down, and we're still going to make these restrictions. But we're 15 knots fast. It's really kind of a heads up. It's telling you that things aren't exactly the way they ought to be, and you really ought to pay attention. If you want to, you can go ahead and pull speed brakes and slow the airplane back down to the target speed of 295 here, or you can just live with it for a while, see what happens. Chances are that speed's going to go away anyway. Often as not, 
You get a little fast here, you end up getting a little slow here. On the other hand, as you get down closer to 10,000 feet, if you get up plus 15 knots and you get this drag required, you might want to think then about pulling speed brakes because if you're going too fast when it starts to slow down, you're going to be too fast here when it gets to 10,000 feet and the FMC will not allow the aircraft to go below 10 until it gets to 250 or less. In any case, if you choose to ignore this plus 15 knots and it gets up to plus 20, 25, eventually it's going to get to the barber pole. And it's not going to go above the barber pole. VNAV will not allow you to exceed the parameters there. So what's going to happen then, if you get all the way up to the barber pole, it's going to say, hey guy, I warned you. I told you to put out drag. You didn't pay any attention to me. I'm out of here. And it's going to depart the path. And it's going to go to VNAV speed. Now we got a little bit of a problem. We were all right as long as it was in path, but now it's in VNAV speed. Now you're basically in flight level change mode. That's basically what you're doing. This airplane is just coming down and following the speed that you've got dialed in on your airspeed indicator. Actually, the FMC has it dialed in on the airspeed indicator. So we have to do something about this to get it back down on the path or we're not going to make our restrictions. What should we do? Got a couple choices. We could go up to our mode control panel, go to speed intervention on the airspeed indicator, the airspeed selector, and crank that all the way up to the barber pole to make sure that the aircraft is coming down just at the highest possible velocity so that your drag curve goes up. And maybe you'll increase that rate of descent enough to get back down to the path. And that generally does work. But occasionally it doesn't. The winds are just too strong, or we're actually too close to the point where we have to make this altitude, in which case we're going to have to pull some speed brakes. We're in the speed mode now. If we pull speed brakes while we're in the speed mode, the only way the aircraft can maintain that speed is by lowering the nose and getting into a higher rate of descent. Eventually, whatever means you use, you're going to capture the path again. As soon as you capture the path, it enunciates. And what an enunciates path, we have to be sure that we get rid of that speed intervention. If we leave it in speed intervention, say 330 knots, we're going to end up probably getting slower than that speed since this path was originally constructed using these particular speeds. If we leave it at 330 knots, we're going to get slow. If we get 15 knots slower than the speed selected, whether it's the automatic speed selected or the speed intervention that we've selected, the power will come in to maintain that speed for you. And the auto throttles are going to enunciate speed until you reach the speed, and then they'll go back into idle. I didn't mention it earlier, but during this descent, when these auto throttles go to idle, they'll stay in idle for about 20 seconds or so, and then they go to throttle hold. Gives you control of the throttles in case you want to adjust them. So plus 15, drag required. Minus 15, power comes up to get your speed back. It can fix it if you're too slow, but it can't fix it if you're too fast. Interesting note, if the auto throttles aren't working, if they're turned off and you get 15 not slow, you'll get a message that says thrust required. You don't see that very often because the auto throttles are usually working. Okay, that fixes us up in case we get high or in case we uh, get slow or fast or whatever. Now you might ask, what happens if the aircraft gets low on the path? What is it going to do? Well, the only way that it can get low on the path is if A, you had no auto throttles and B, you let the aircraft slow down all the way down to alpha speed. It will maintain the path until it gets to alpha speed and then it'll finally give up the path in order to maintain a safe speed for you, the same as it gave up the path here to keep from going through the barber pole. That's almost never going to happen. I just can't see it happening at all. If, however, you're on this path and you do anything at all to the FMC to change any altitudes or to add new altitudes further on down, the FMC is going to construct a whole new path. Every time you make a change to the FMC, it constructs an entire new path. 
And if you happen to be sitting right here on the path, and you make a change, say, to your approach, 2,000 foot or something like that, and it constructs a new path, and that new path happens to be way up here above you, now you are indeed low on the path. No problem there. The auto throttles will come up, the nose will rise up, and it'll go on up and it'll catch the new path. So getting low is not a problem. All right, now we're coming on down. We're on the path. Let me erase all this mess that I put in here, make it look right. And ATC says, American uh, 967, delete your Salinas restriction, cross Gilroa at 8. OK, a couple of choices here. One is good, one is not so good. On your descent page, down in the lower right-hand corner, there's a button that says Descend Direct. If you press that button and execute, it will eliminate all of your intermediate altitudes to the end of the descent. Now, if Gilroe happens to be the end of your descent, if it's the last altitude in your FMC, no problem. It'll do it. But if you happen to have put your approach in up here, and you've got some altitudes over the marker at 3,000 feet, whatever it happens to be, you're going to eliminate Gilroe too by doing that. So be real careful when you push descend direct. A better way to do it is to go to your legs page. and just delete this number. Press delete and put it on top of this. That number goes away. It'll compute a new path, which is going to be pretty close to the path you're already on, and it'll get you over Gill Road 8,000 feet. That's a much better way to do it. You don't have to worry about that descend direct thing. All right, now, when it gets to about, oh, 10,500 to 11,000 feet, it's going to raise the nose of the aircraft and it's going to establish a 500 foot per minute descent so as to slow down to 240 knots. And earlier I said this 240 knots was going to be a question. You're going to ask me why 240, why not 250? The reason is because as we had plus or minus 15 knots here above 10,000 feet, we've got a plus or minus 10 knot cushion below 10,000 feet. In other words, if it gets as slow as 230 knots, the power will come in. If it gets as fast as 250 knots, you'll get an enunciation that says drag required. In this case, it really means it because we've got a 250 knot speed limit below 10,000 feet. That's why we use 240 below 10,000. All right, let's talk about some of the enunciations that we're going to have during our descent. What are we going to see on the descent page? What are we going to see on the uh, HSI? As you know, over on the right-hand side of the HSI, during the descent, we have an enunciation that looks like a glide slope. It's actually a glide path indicator. Some people call it the poor man's glide slope. Actually, it's a rich man's glide slope. If we look at our descent page, we're going to see a couple of interesting points. The end of the descent will be enunciated over here on the left-hand side and it's going to say end of descent at whatever is the last point that you've got for a descent. If Gilroe happens to be the last altitude that we have for a descent, then Gilroe will be the end of a descent. If we've got the approach plugged in, then the last altitude on the approach, possibly your runway altitude, will be the end of the descent. Let's assume that Gilroe is it for now. It's going to say end of descent at uh, end of descent 8,000 at Gilroe. It's also going to show the next active descent altitude. In this case, as we're approaching Salinas at 16, it's going to say uh, SNS at 16,000. So it tells us what's next and what's the end. Over here on the right side, it's going to tell us how we're doing on the actual path. In case we're not right on the path, it's going to tell us. And it's going to tell us by enunciating both an altitude deviation, a variance, you could say, and also a distance. If you happened to be, oh, let's say way down here, which earlier I said would be very unlikely for you to be low, but it will enunciate this particular difference in altitude, say 500 feet low, 
And it's also going to enunciate a distance. If you're this low, you really shouldn't be this low until you're up to this point here. So it's going to say perhaps two miles short. So by looking here at about 3R, I believe it's around 3R, it's going to tell you how high or low you are on the path. And normally, as long as you're enunciating VNAV path, this is going to be pretty close to zero, so it's not a big deal. Over on your HSI, you've got your compass rows, you've got your map, and you've also got this poor man's glide slope. And it gives you a visual picture of how high you are or low you are on the path. Works the same as an ILS, but it's much less accurate than an ILS. Full scale deflection is 400 feet. So you can see it's good, but it's not an ILS by any means. And it gives you a real good idea how you're doing there. It works all the way through the whole approach. You've probably already seen that. OK, let's back up now to the cruise section of flight, talk about the descent page while we're still in cruise. If we happen to be right here at 31,000 feet, and ATC gives us this clearance to cross Gilroy at 8,000 feet, all we have to do is reach up to our mode control panel, as I mentioned earlier, and crank in 8,000 feet. At the appropriate time, the aircraft will start down. But occasionally, ATC will say, American, start your descent now. <clears throat> well, that's not really right. He shouldn't do that because it's either a pilot's discretion descent or it isn't. But to make him happy, we've got a button down here which happens to be the same button as this descend direct. Prior to the execution of the descent, this button says descend now. Pressing that button and executing it will cause the aircraft to go into a 1,200 foot per minute descent until it intercepts the VNAV path. The enunciations that we'll get on our ADI, auto throttles, EPR, because it pulls it back to the appropriate EPR to give you a 1,200 foot per minute descent. VNAV, speed, because it's just drifting down in a speed mode. Once it reestablishes itself on this path, auto throttles will go to idle, and then the throttle hold, and VNAV will go to path, just the same as it was before. So descend now is a nice little button. When ATC tries to get us to do something that we're not really ready to do, we can push descend now and execute it, and they say, oh great, Americans leaving 31, I'm happy now. You're really doing just the same thing, you're just starting a little bit earlier, and cutting the corner. Okay, now as I said, once we start the descent, the descent page becomes active, this changes to descend direct. And I explained that earlier. There is also a climb direct page, excuse me, a climb direct button, which you can find on the climb page. I'm backing up now, but I wanted to explain this to you first regarding the descent so that it makes more sense when I talk about the climb. Occasionally during a climb, you'll have altitude restrictions. A certain point is required that you cross this, uh, you cross it at or below 5,000 feet. And so we put that on the legs page opposite the particular fix. We put 5,000 B. Occasionally ATC will waive those restrictions while you're climbing out and you're in VNAV and he says, eliminate your uh, 5,000 foot restriction, climb unrestricted to uh, 12,000, whatever it happens to be. Here on the climb page, if there are any climb restrictions on your legs page, you'll have an enunciation here. It'll say climb direct. Press execute and it eliminates those restrictions and you'll climb unrestricted. For instance, taking off from Orange County not the way you're going to do it tomorrow during your loft, but on a different departure in Orange County, it requires that you maintain 5,000 feet till a particular point, after which you're cleared to, uh, let's say, 12,000 feet. So you set 12,000 feet in your mode control panel window, and you've got 5,000 feet on your legs page at or below 5,000 at a particular point. The aircraft will level off at 5,000 feet if you're in VNAV, even though you've got 12 in your mode control panel. 
If ATC clears you to climb unrestricted to 12, you just go climb direct, execute, no more 5,000 foot restriction, it goes right on up. All right, the only other part we need to talk about now is during cruise. How do we handle en route cruise climbs and en route cruise descents? These are real simple. Eliminate some of this stuff, get us some room. We're flying along at flight level 310, and we want to go up to flight level 350. Let's move our mode control panel right here, and it says 31000. And we look at our cruise page, and it says flight level 310. We call up ATC. We say, hey, this is American 947. We'd like to go up to 350. He says, Roger, American, you're cleared to 350. Read it back. We reach up to our mode control panel, and we crank in 35,000 feet. Here on the cruise page, in the scratch pad, you'll get 35,000 feet as soon as you crank that into the mode control panel. All we have to do is take this, line select it up here, and execute, and the aircraft will start a climb to 35,000 feet and maintain 35,000 feet. The cruise page will change to where it says cruise climb. Actually, it'll say active cruise climb. Until you get to 35, and then it'll just go back to cruise. <clears throat> That's real nice. How about descents? We're at 35,000 feet, and we want to come down to 31,000 feet. Call ATC, ask him. He clears you to 31. Put 31,000 feet in the window. Put 310 down here. And then line selected up to here and then execute. And now the aircraft's going to start down, but how does it start down? Good question. It pulls the power back just the same as it did on the descend now button. Remember when we talked about that? It pulls the power back just enough to give you a 1,200 foot per minute descent. VNAV goes into VNAV speed and the aircraft comes down at approximately 1,200 feet a minute, and then it levels off and everything's fine again. While it's descending down at that 1,200 feet a minute, your ADI looks like this. Auto throttles, EPR, VNAV, speed, and then after about 20 seconds or so, it goes to auto throttle, throttle hold. Brings up a good point. You're coming down here at 1,200 feet a minute, and ATC says, hey, American, can you expedite your descent? If you don't think about it, you might think, gee, I guess I better go to flight level change. But if you do think about it a little bit, your throttles are in throttle hold. You just have to reach up and grab them and pull them to idle, and that's it. You're expediting your descent. It's coming right on down. It'll stay in VNAV then, and it'll level off at 31. Go back into auto throttle speed, VNAV path. All right, just a couple more things now regarding the enunciations on the HSI, specifically what we call vertical events. A vertical event is obviously an event where something changes in the vertical plane. Initially, we have, an, a, verti we have a vertical event at the top of our climb, and you'll see a little green circle at the top of the climb. Let me show you what that looks like on the HSI. I don't have magenta color here, and I don't have green color, but you can bear with me. And we'll assume that this is a magenta line pointing out in front of the aircraft. I'll use blue here in place of green. At the point the aircraft, or I should say the FMC, the point at which the FMC thinks it's going to reach the top of the climb, it'll put a little green circle with a TC. Now this green circle doesn't always line up with the green arc that we have based on our mode control panel setting. And the reason for that is that the top of the climb is based on VNAV information. This aircraft is going to be climbing at a certain rate of climb now, 
And as we get higher, that rate of climb is going to decrease. But the green arc is based on only two things. One is your existing ground speed, and the other is your existing vertical speed. And it's predicting when you'll reach that altitude if you maintain those particular rates. So these will not necessarily be on top of each other. As you finally get closer and closer and closer to your altitude, they will overlay each other finally for the last 1,000 feet or so. Vertical event, T slash C. <clears throat> we also have vertical events during the descent. As we're in cruise and we approach the top of our descent, we'll get a vertical event called T slash D, top of descent. That's the point at which the aircraft is planning to go down in order to make whatever restrictions you've given it. By the way, if you're in VNAV and you allow the airplane to fly beyond the top of descent without changing the mode control panel, as you approach the top of descent, you'll get an FMC message that says reset MCP altitude, mode control panel altitude. It's reminding you because it cannot leave the altitude without permission from you. If you choose not to put that new altitude in there, <clears throat> and you fly beyond your top of descent, the aircraft will come out of VNAV and it will go into altitude hold. VNAV is gone now because you're beyond it. You can recapture if you go into a very high rate of descent to recapture the path, but otherwise you're out of uh, VNAV. All right, so we've got a green circle here at the top of descent. We've got a pair of green circles that are unlabeled, and one is the vertical event at which the aircraft raises its nose to a 500 foot per minute descent in order to slow down to 240 knots as it approaches 10,000 feet. The second one is where it assumes it's going to already be at 240 knots so that it continue its descent right on down. So these are generally pretty close together within 10 miles or so. Finally, the last one is up the ways a little bit. If you could see beyond these points on your uh, HSI, the last one you'd have <clears throat> is your end of the descent. And that's the same one we discussed earlier on the descent page. Remember when we talked about end of descent, uh, gill row, whatever it happens to be, the last altitude that you have. So these vertical events, five of them, top of climb, top of descent, the two unlabeled as you slow down, and the end of the descent, are in green, and you can see them. And it'll give you an idea of just what the airplane is planning on doing during the descent. All right, what about ATC intervening with our best laid plans? We've got this thing going down the hill. We're on the VNAV path. We're doing 294 knots. Everything is working like a champ. Suddenly, ATC says, American, I'd like you to slow to 250 knots. Well, a lot of people at this time just throw in the towel and they go to flight level change and crank in 250 knots, and that will work. Remember this, anytime you're in VNAV, and you start to get overwhelmed by all this, don't fight it. Go ahead, throw in the towel, go to flight level change, go to vertical speed, if you have to, and make it work. Make this thing work for you, don't work for it. But let me show you the trick on this thing when we're in our vertical nav path and ATC tells you to slow down. Let's suppose we're crossing Gilrow at 8,000 feet. And I'm not going to put the little vertical events in here for slowing down at 10 because that's not really relevant right here. We're coming down here at 294 knots, and the airplane is sitting right on the path, and it's just doing fine, and we're happy as can be. Slow to 250. If I just go to speed intervention up on my mode control panel, which is normally blank during a VNAV descent, and I open up that window and I crank it down to 250 knots. I move my bug down here to 250 knots. But is that going to do me any good? That's not going to do me any good at all because this aircraft is descending in V nav path. And the throttles are at idle. And if you're descending on a path in idle power, there's no way you can make that airplane slow down by just moving this bug down to 250 knots. It will not slow down. So you've got two choices. Choice number one, put 250 knots in here, move your bug to 250, and then pull speed brakes. Speed brakes are obviously going to make the airplane slow down because we're on the path. 
that's probably a pretty good short-term solution. However, if ATC says maintain 250 knots and he implies that it's for the duration of your descent all the way down, then you might want to go to your descent page and where you originally had 294 knots during your descent, let's put 250 in the scratch pad. Line selected back up here. We've got 250 up here now. Execute. And the first thing that's going to happen Remember I told you, when you make any changes, the path is going to go away. So we lose the path, we go to VNAV speed, and it redraws a new path. And if that path happens to be up above us, the airplane will climb up and get it. If it happens to be down below us, we're going to have to do something to make sure the airplane gets down and captures it. So those are your two choices, speed intervention plus speed brakes, or redo the descent page. What we've talked about today is going to get you through about 80 to 90 percent of what you really need to know on VNAV. There is a bit more. There's some fine tuning that you can do. There's some little nuances that you're going to pick up from your fellow pilots. But these are just going to come with practice. Now, I, I hope that you've gotten enough out of this so that you can really enjoy your loft tomorrow. I know you're going to enjoy the 757, 767 out on the line, and we'll see you there. time. As Mr. Webster defines it, a measurable interval, or a period between two events in which something happens. Time. Aviation runs to its beat. In fact, its success is often rated in terms of being on time. Bob, what was our off time? Sometimes, however, being on time is not either possible or prudent. And more often than not, you'll find that at least one of the reasons is weather. Folks, this is the captain speaking. We're observing some bad weather on our radar ahead of us. And to uh, avoid that, we're going to delay our approach for a